Welcome everyone to our recurring IT breaking uh, latest and greatest and literally breaking and buggy news here live on this channel and uh, we just this time we don't have too many so maybe we in general try to change it to have uh, only a couple of them a couple of news every day to keep it maybe a little bit more interesting so this is big news this week the biggest probably of all of those news zero day in sign in with apple the, you might remember the super top-notch military and enterprise grade single sign-in solution from apple that they even um, enforce as if you have some kind of login mechanism in your app store stuff then since quite some months maybe nearly a year or something you need to support sign-in with apple for <laughs> security right and uh, the users and now someone here which uh, be have you charge someone um this is a proper name somewhere um whatever no proper name anyway um so a super short bug which they also disclose here they were paid a hundred thousand dollar here by apple for this apple security bounty program and this bug is actually super simple so simple that i can already show you now the famous here face palm when we take a look uh, how this works here according to this article technical details this uh, sign in with apple works with uh, similarly to oauth 2.0 two possible ways to authenticate a user by using jwt json web token or a code generated by the apple server the code is then using the generated jwt the below diagram represents how this jwt creation uh, validation works authorization request authorization granted exchange of jwt verification uh, using apple's public key verification successful here and on apple servers and third-party application and <clears throat> he found that normally doesn't look too difficult and oauth is uh, already um, in the industry probably a decade or something and uh, even already version 2.0 right so what could possibly go wrong i mean apple and big companies and stuff and they certainly do totally amazing as seen as on our and louis rossman's channel and turns out yeah this bug is super simple so here they found that um the the, the bug that you could request any jwt for any email id from apple when the signature of those tokens was verified using the apple public key they showed as valid so basically as far as i understand this you can uh, use your own so not theirs uh, email but use your own like hey uh, john doe steve jobs whatever um, at apple whatever stuff here or email contact whatever um, private relay whatever apple id and you get this uh, verified right i mean totally face palm here like seriously who implemented this uh, this bug is too buggy even for an entry level intern i would say but yeah so basically request any email address and get it verified there because now yeah, that's certainly how you're doing it in 2020 the impact of the volatility was quite critical as uh, could have been allowed full account takeover a lot of developers have integrated sign in with apple since it's mandatory for applications that support other social logins to name a few that use apple's assigning with apple's dropbox spotify rbnb and jiffy no code by facebook were tested to have this vulnerability and full account takeover and um, apparently apple did investigate the logs and determined that there was no misuse in account compromise due to this vulnerability but yeah uh, certainly as, as seen as at louis rossman only a very small percentage of users usually affected of course people here like um did apple hire an intern to develop this feature and uh, anyway exactly the stuff that we're here for and spreading awareness and i also wonder that none of this big but they also see big companies you would think um in open source linux bsd other people read this you would think that this this stuff is peer reviewed at apple or at least other developers like google or whatnot here uh, maybe dropbox or rbnb would have spent some extra hour or day or week of security investigation here but um, it took some internal uh, internal it took, took some external person to take a look and, and play around with to find this tribal issue speaking about 
eye-catching. Actually, I wanted to show this. Why do I have this here? Strange. Michigan State University Network breached in ransomware attack. Um, recurring theme here. We have this basically in each and every of our IT news shows here. Not too big of a surprise for us. However, um, a recurring reminder that this is not over, that just installing Windows a recurring theme like nobody was ever fired for um, purchasing IBM equipment, like somehow like nobody was ever fired for purchasing Microsoft stuff. But in reality, with this track record of decades of bugs and security issues, uh, certainly in Windows and other such systems, and increasingly as we see as I uh, newscast here uh, uh, on a weekly basis, Huge issue, your local hospital, police station, uh, courthouse, government, university in Germany, USA, uh, left and right, you name it. Basically everywhere, um, from networker ransomware as a service operators, a group that recently started to recruit skilled network intruders for their affiliate programs. Like, yeah, 2020, there, is no, there are no affiliate programs for network intruders. Count on time on the Tekka's website shows that the university has about six days to comply uh, or secret data will become public. And um, gives no details about it, but they posted images with directories, passport scans, two financial documents allegedly stolen from the university network, and um, antivirus removers to disable defenses, network under replies. I relies on multiple programs for remote access, team viewer, any desk files from public code repositories and custom PowerPoint, PowerShell scripts, however, also three legitimate tools to answer security on compromised systems. So for security, also, yeah, um, last IT news of um, malware remover, 2020 malware remover used to intrude networks. Speaking about Microsoft blocks, Trend Micro, Code at center of driver cheatware storms from Windows 10 rootkit detector product pulled from side. Also, probably last week's IT News WC. Um, I said this before on the main channel this snake oil and developer hindrance that is this Apple App Store notarization. Like, basically, they do nothing. It's pure snake oil, similar to your Microsoft code signing. Basically, on Windows, they can just sign whatever and distribute whatever cheatware there. And uh, yeah, update Microsoft has blocked the Trend Micro driver. Also, yeah, 2020 malware removal and detection stuff obviously running as drivers <coughs> because that is the security level of 2020. Withdrawn downloads of the rootkit detector that uses the driver after the code appeared to game Redmond's QA tests. Um, I think I had this in the last security news. Anyway, remove the downloads. Um, Windows internal guru uh, discovered the blockade and highlighted on Twitter or something. Um, yeah, passing these tests. So basically, they cheated to get this Microsoft hardware quality lab certificate. So basically, in testing, they have done other things and hiding their core uh, stuff that other non approved stuff they do. This also, yeah, App Store review could also happen to Apple. Google and um, yeah, WQ, uh, WHQL certification, totally <laughs> worth it. Not recurring theme here. Um, anyway, speaking about Windows 10, Microsoft's new uh, now credits maker of package manager, allegedly, apparently, there was some controversy in. Did I have this in some news? There is this new Windows 10. Package manager that people are so happy about that basically Windows, Microsoft Windows, um, getting on par and, and leveling up with Linux in terms of package management and application installment. And it turns out that some Canadian developer accused Microsoft of mostly copying his open source project um, from Winget. So, um, for no, as, as we're wrong, for Winget, so Winget is a new Windows tool. The other tool was AppGet, so allegedly here, um, Microsoft now admitted they failed to give due credit to Canadian developer Kevin Beige, also, um, sorry for wrong pronunciation here, recurring theme, for its role in Winget Windows 10 Package Manager. 
last week by G, who built the open source AppGet, um, yeah, also AppGet, right? Package manager for Windows accused Microsoft of, also yeah, AppGet probably maybe inspired from Debian or other Linux distributions, but yeah. So yeah, 2020, independent developers accused Microsoft, uh, again, a recurring theme at Apple and Microsoft of copying their work without acknowledging their product. So I'm not sure if they mean just inspired the features or if they literally mean taking open source code from GitHub. It's not, not entirely instantly clear to me, but um, he alleges that Microsoft copied large parts of AppGet to deliver WinGet, the Windows Package Manager announced that last week's Microsoft build. And um, apparently he was even flown in there for an interview. Um, he said there, so uh, they even promised him a job uh, before that, but um, that uh, he didn't basically went to an interview. He thought it's, it, it goes well, but never heard back or something was written here somewhere. So yeah, he went for an interview at Microsoft. He says he thinks and went, went well, as I said, and, and didn't inform him whether he gets a job or not until six months later, uh, the day before. Actually, they don't really show if he gets a job, right? but whatever, it doesn't. De details, who cares about details? But yeah, next controversy here. Um, but um, yeah, I, I really wonder, um, whether they mean copying the code as it or just inspiring the features, in which case it's a little bit near yeah, whatever happens each and every day. But anyway, speaking of major systems like Mac OS, iOS, Windows and Android, they warn here IS Universe warning never set this picture as wallpaper on Android, especially in Samsung phones, will cause the phone to crash. Don't try it. If someone sends your picture, please ignore it. So yes, 2020 images can still crash your phone. And in the case of the wallpaper, um, apparently this causes in a reboot loop or UI server stuff looping there. And if you didn't root it and have other means of removing this, then it's factory reset. They diagnosed it here that this is based on the color profile. So recurring theme was on the main channel, 70% of the problems caused by memory issues in a previous video on the main channel, and probably that corner, I guess. And so apparently <coughs> here's a code, get histogram here, apparently allegedly bitmap grayscale looks C++-ish. Um, not sure. So this is some, it's somewhere in the color profile stuff. And apparently here they index this color in the histogram here. So it's by the way, so histogram, uh, by the way, I want a color red, green, blue. Is this not why this is, um, this is not. So basically, um, apparently this colors maybe in the um, profile result to color values higher than FF hex, so 255. At least that's what they say there. Also, when I look here, this histogram, it's a little bit strange. They have here 256. However, they add here the red, green, and blue values. So I'm not really sure this looks a little bit fishy anyway. So probably I should actually study this code um, in detail. But basically they say uh, Android Java file process. So is this Java? Uh, does it look more Java than C++? Uh, the, mm, whatever, leave me in the comments below, although maybe it is Java actually. Anyway, uh, maybe this private there in front of the function, could you write this like this? Probably could actually write this like this in C++. Anyway, leave in the comments below, but anyway, this stuff here, this red, green, blue edition stuff looks also additionally fishy, but uh, the, the main bug allegedly here is that this red, green, blue stuff can with the right color profile of uh, whatever this is, um, P3 or whatever of something of that sort, um, result in this kind of boot loop here as seen here. So yeah, 2020, amazing software engineering and stability security as its finest. And um, yeah, uh, whatever, you know how to set a background, don't need to show you that. But um, yeah, unless you have rooted this, so you could change data system user zero wallpaper with some good wallpaper, but uh, yeah, anyway. In similar news, software bug in Bombardier, airliner made planes turn the wrong way. Um, seriously, what the heck, um, what are 
airplane vendors like Boeing, Airbus, Bombardier. Doing their cold weather missed approaches went left instead of right and vice versa. Like seriously, what the heck? Um, can't even make this stuff up as a satire comedy site. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't take it seriously from a comedy website, but it's apparently real engineering there at Bombardier. Very specific software bug made airliner. So it, it looks a little bit like maybe a wrong sign or something. Um, it's it's hilarious. And, and it's of course uh, can't I need a double triple and all over the screen face palm and you would think that for stuff like an airplane they actually test double and triple test and certify and whatnot but the bug discovered in this apparently in this bombardier crj 200 aircraft fitted with rockwell collins aerospace made flight management systems fms's led to airlines trying to follow certain missed approaches turning right instead of left and vice versa like seriously in this is Boeing already and yeah, it's like a software security engineer you already don't want to enter airplanes anymore and self-driving cars certainly not for especially when they run on x86 CPUs with JavaScript and Chrome and stuff but um, yeah first discovered in 2017 I slightly wonder why it took three years to hear from this the floor was only apparent when pilots manually edited the preset climb to altitude program into a missed approach pro CGR following an instrument landing um, ILS approach it also arose if pilots use the FM, uh, FMS's temperature compensation function in extremely cold weather. In theory, the bug could have led to airlines crashing into the ground, though the presence of two trained and alert humans in the cockpit monitoring what the aircraft was doing made this remotely possible. Uh, a remote possibility um, but yeah self-driving cars and planes and stuff like yeah so much to automating the last humans humans away leave in the comments below what you think um, it's um, yeah it's it's said that after 50 60 70 years of or 100 years of aero plane airplane engineering we still have and an Computer systems can't make this stuff up. up. In similar news, I didn't include this, but maybe small anecdote as we rush through here to not that many news today. I saw somewhere, maybe Reddit, that this SpaceX stuff that landed there or uh, flew to the ISS is running um, on an x86 um, with Java script and Chromium or so. In case you ever were wondering if. Um, wants to fly with that um, anyway probably should have um, probably this here maybe allegedly uh, SpaceX crew uh, UI here apparently SpaceX uses actor judge system to provide triple redundancy to its rockets and spacecrafts. The Falcon 9 has three dual core x86 like uh, no you don't want to use x86. Previous video super complex instructions and architecture that is rarely bug free especially on Intel's sake. Running an instance of Linux on each hopefully T2 obviously on each core the flight software is written in C, C++ and uh, also C uh, previous video 70% of memory uh, bugs and issues memory related so uh, see no, please also not SpaceX and the engineering gone wrong um, so um, <coughs> leave me in the comments run an x86 environment for each calculation decision the flight string compares the result from both cores what do you mean with both do they not mean three or anyway if there is an inconsistency, the string is bad and doesn't send any commands. If both cores return the same response, the string sends a command to the various microcontrollers on the rocket that control things like engines and grid fins. The microcontrollers running on PowerPC, so uh, yeah, obviously a much better choice, um, at least it's uh, not as complex, receiving three commands from the three flight strings they act as a judge to choose the correct course of action. If all three strings are in agreement, the microcontroller executes a command. But if one of the three is bad, it will go with a string that 
has previously been correct. The Falcon 9 has successfully completed its mission with a single... What? The, uh, can, can, uh, so not, not has, can. Successfully completes the mission with one single flight string. The triple redundancy gives the system radiation tolerance without the need of expensive rad radiation hardened components. SpaceX tests all flight software on what they call a table rockets. Like, uh, apparently, they lay out all the com computers and flight controllers on the Falcon 9 on a table and connect them like they would be on an actual rocket, like yeah, table testing, I don't know, that sounds a little bit fishy, but nah. anyway, so um, probably no SpaceX flight for me, um, and would not only not use x86, but the virtualization apparently they um, run here, Tesla hardware is used, um, it appears Tesla hardware is not used, they use some interesting software for Dragon 2, they use Chromium and JavaScript for the Dragon 2 flight interface. The actual flight computer still runs on C++. But yes, yeah, so the interface, so basically that means if your Chromium is seriously erased, if you think which IT, which computer science uh, graduate prof uh, professional um, thinks that is a good idea to run flight control system in, in Chromium, JavaScript, and it's like, nah, no, you don't want to do that. But yeah, if stuff hangs on the desktop, that is one thing. But if your um, flight UI stuff hangs with out of memory with uh, closing and crashing tabs and it's like, nah. And um, also, as this stuff is not redundant and running on one thing, I wonder if this, if it is not radiation hardened, your UI stuff could randomly crash but uh, on top of Chromium. But anyway, with all these issues, vulnerabilities and fun stuff, the NSA still warns of ongoing, uh, yeah, this is uh, actual ongoing Russian hacking campaign against the US system. So, recurring shout out here, we do not do this here for fun. It's not a drill. And with this level of, hey, zero day in, the most prominent, most to be secure single sign in with Apple, what could possibly. Also, yeah, monopoly and monoculture, right? One single sign in system, what could possibly go wrong? But um, yeah, Microsoft, Windows, Android, and stuff like, yeah. Um, the NSA agrees with us, want government partners and private companies about the Russian hacking operation. Also, yeah, this is, of course, not a, a one-way road here. This is, goes to, certainly, we have seen this with Snowden Papers, NSA, Five Eyes, and friends and family hacking each other. So not only Russia, USA, but also USA, Russia, and the rest of the world from Venezuela to uh, Europe and where not. So I won here agreeing with the NSA, but one step further off, hey, yeah, uh, certainly the NSA too and everyone and each other. And that's certainly why we can't have crypto backdoors and need top-notch security without off by one errors array overruns here by um, a little bit and similar such. Let's just sign any email that comes to our server. Vulnerabilities that's being actively exploited, um, bringing this notification out, says stuff Chris, the chief of cybersecurity collaboration center. So yeah, you're not he only hearing it from me, you're also hearing it from the NSA and recurring theme of where we need to step up this IT stuff. Speaking of stepping up this IT stuff, eye-catching at once means in AI fields are not necessarily real, they write here. Artificial intelligence AI seems to get smarter and smarter, which uh, also actually, uh, until it, it doesn't ever try to, hey Siri or uh, Bixby, call whoever, and anyway, not doing much. Each iPhone learns your face, voice, habits better than the last, and threads, AI poses, privacy drop continues to grow. Search reflects faster chips, more data, better algorithms, but some of the improvements come from tweaks rather than core innovation. Their inventors claim, and some of the gains may not exist at all, says Davis Blaylock, a computer science graduate student at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Blaylock and his colleagues compared dozens of approaches to improving neural network software architecture that loosely mimics the brain. 50 papers in, he says, it became clear that it wasn't obvious what the state of the art 
even was. So researchers evaluated 81 pruning algorithms, programs that make neural networks more efficient by trimming unneeded connections, all claimed superiority in slightly different ways, but they were rarely compared properly. And when the researchers tried to evaluate them side by side, there was no clear evidence of performance improvements over a 10 year period. So yeah, <laughs> money and research apparently well spent, not. Machine learning and systems conference surprised Blaylock's PhD advisor, MIT computer scientist, John Gottek, good, good talk. Good talk? Good talk? I have no idea. Who says the uh, uneven comparison themselves may explain the stagnation? It's uh, old saw, so right? Good talk uh, said. If you can't measure something, it's hard to make it better. Anyway, recurring also my impression, but uh, in any case, you can't simply throw artificial, uh, AI artificial intelligence on everything and ex expect it to randomly. Um, it's, it's, yeah, garbage in, garbage out. And certainly hard to debug if you train it and it goes wrong in the field, then um, can't even debug the stuff except adding more training data. And anyway, AI future, certainly quite questionable and certainly somewhat troubled. Leave me as usual comments. I asked a couple of times already, but always interested to hear your opinion, what you think of this state of AI and the future of that. Speaking about the future, another Amazon Echo no more, another Alexa device discontinued. A recurring theme here, we basically in the meantime have this at least once a month, but sometimes every week of some fancy cloud product and Internet of Things device discontinued, whether it being speakers, smartphones, old uh, smartphones, I mean smartwatches, um, thermostats, uh, smoke detector, detectors, cameras, and yeah. So recurring theme here, maybe not the best way to spend your money on internet of shit devices. Quietly introduce the uh, Echo Look, Alexa enabled smart speaker for fashion advice in fashion advice, hmm, whatever. April 2017, yesterday the company quietly informed it's few thousand users, also only a very limited of few thousand users. Echo Look would be discontinued. Um, introduced Look three years ago, our goal was to train Alexa to become a style assistant as a novel way to apply AI. <laughs> there we have it. AI and machine learning to fashion. Exactly. Who would go out without an Alexa? Is it Alexa? Um, Amazon Echo Look Alexa. Uh, fashion checker, um, Alexa, how do I look? I have no words, no more. That's this week's IT news here from Breaking Zero uh, Day sign in. If you wondered if giving one company one monopoly there in this single uh, sign in business. Ransomware, Microsoft uh, copying stuff uh, as usual and blocking antivirus uh, cheating stuff, Android um, image crashing, boot looping, SpaceX, um, quite if true, questionable, maybe leave in the comments below, but otherwise Bombardier um, turns the wrong way, flight control system, NSA warning just like we do, and otherwise AI and stuff like there. Yeah. Welcome to 2020, not the best year of all the years. Uh, let's uh, better um, think how to improve the state of IT. Maybe do not buy, well, certainly probably don't tell, need to tell it too many people in this audience, but probably don't waste your hard earned money. Vote with your wallet and certainly don't waste it on this internet of shit devices. Um, I probably on the main channel, we theoretically, because even I certainly don't have a master patent of how to do OS or IT infrastructure just perfectly right. Uh, this will be a year long, if not lifelong um, learning process here live on YouTube on this on the more main channel. And probably if you're interested in this sort of stuff, also operating system development of uh, what we want to go do ourselves and also low level code here usually on this and the more main channel. Probably some philosophical discussion sometime soon of what do we even want our future OS to be. I certainly usually say microkernel, but there are certainly many more aspects to that. Um, 
Minority Report kind of UI or Star Trek Wars kind of UI stuff, uh, if not to say um, holographic or whatever stuff, but let's just dream and fantasize, brainstorm. Um, is it worse in 2020 to start a classic, classic as in modern, as in 1980s modern microkernel system from scratch or is it wasted time? Should we do something entirely different? And if it is such a classic system of doing it just more secure and stable and scalable, um, what kind of features could we add in there? Um, how should you build this up? Or is it better to, again, some Star Trek kind of future AI, um, AI we had this in previous IT news, AI OS, maybe certainly not personally going too much into the AI, artificial intelligence operating system stuff, but certainly worth a discussion. So something we will probably do sometime soon to brainstorm, but it doesn't need to be that crazy in terms of AI. It could also be how to, if we do some Unix like, but micro kernel, micro server for more security, do we even want a classic vintage retro file system hierarchy standard? with uh, bin, um, bin etc, lib and user and whatnot, or something much more modern, differently structured um, for better management, like Zuhul, maybe going crazy of having all the OS components in some app store, like app store, everything um, like totally modern or Virtualization of microservices first with, with everything from some like cargo or app store kind of repository stuff. So doing something modern um, from scratch with without any legacy craft, certainly many options and huge implications to choose from. Certainly something we will discuss and explore in the future there on my main channel many years to come. For that would be amazing if you share, like and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon for all this. Unfortunately, security vulnerability news, bugs, and also sometimes features, and certainly low-level development and code live here on the main channel to come.